would your dream aircraft to fly be? The Boeing 737-200, wow. the oldest one. Well, I think it uh, brings back my childhood, you know. I used to live in Salvador really? when I was little, yeah. and I used to go to the airport deck where you could see all the aircraft coming in for parking and leaving. So I would hear the noisy 737-200 from Varig and Vasp, and I always dream about flying this aircraft, you know. Yeah. It's a dream of a, a little kid. Okay. <laughs> In your opinion, what would be the difference between flying domestic and international routes? Well, uh, I think it's experience, you know, mm -hmm. um, when you first enter uh, an airline company, you begin flying domestic routes, you know, you don't have quite uh, an experience to start going abroad. Mm -hmm. So, um, after Nowadays, after three, four, five years, you go and start doing international flights. Uh, I think it's all about uh, your experience and your time flying the aircraft or inside the company. You know, and the big difference is that you have to communicate in English. Uh, there are a bunch of new situations you may experience flying abroad, so. It's a new aviation for you, you know, who is used to flying inside the country. Mm -hmm. um, and would you like to fly internationally? Yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. What city do you like to fly to here in Brazil? Well, I've not flown to a lot of cities, uh, but I like to fly to, uh, I think, Vitória. Vitória, why? I don't know, it's flying from here, from Rio to Vitória, uh, you have beautiful sights and yes. wonderful beaches and uh, Vitória is a beautiful place, uh, mm -hmm. like Rio, so I think it's a beautiful flight from the beginning to the end, you know, and well, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what family problems might result from someone being a pilot? Well, problem, problems with your kids, you know. You have to be away from home a lot. Uh, with your wife, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, I guess you should try to, to, to solve those situations and try to talk a lot to them. And, you know, have a good uh, relation. Um, they have to know it's our profession. You don't have anything else to do. Okay. <laughs> Why is it important for a pilot to study meteorology? Because uh, it's something we see every day, you know. Mm -hmm. When you're going to fly, you have to check the weather, and it's something that can affect safety of the flight, you know what I mean? So, I don't think you should ever take off without looking at the weather and the conditions. So, I think it's important for the flight and the flight safety. Yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> what relevant tasks do you think flight attendants do to cooperate with pilots in commercial aviation? Well, um, they have to have a knowledge uh, about emergency procedures. Uh, you know. They have to know how to work and communicate with the with the cockpit crew. You know, they are always communicating, especially mm -hmm. if you have uh, an abnormal situation going on on the cabin. So, I think they they are always working together and should cooperate and communicate well. That's why you have uh, CRM courses and those type of things, you know? Yeah. <coughs> How easy do you think it is to get inside a Brazilian aircraft carrying a gun? Well, I think it's prohibited. I think. Yes, um, it is. 
It Just is. how easy do you think it is? You know, airports are not provided with X-ray machines, not all of them, right? Well, like Jacarepa Walk, where I fly, For they example? don't have an X-ray, so <laughs> I think it's easy to go inside an aircraft and carry them, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if you go to Guarulhos or Congonhas, you may have a chance to get caught, but uh, there are for sure some airports that uh, you can get on a plane carrying a gun or something else, you know, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay. <coughs> So now we're moving to the second part of the test, okay? okay? In this part, you will listen to a speech from the recorder involving two different situations. Okay. When it finishes, I want you to report what you understood, okay? okay? okay. Remember that this time you can listen to each extract twice. Twice. Okay? Alright. Can we go to the first one? Yes. Can I just turn Let's go. May I? Here. Well, a passenger suffered a uh, heart attack and the flight attendant uh, offered assistance. Okay, so now you are the captain, okay? okay? Make a passenger speech asking if there is a doctor on board. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Uh, I'd like to request uh, if we have a doctor on board. Uh, we have a situation with a passenger with a heart attack, so if there is anybody who could help, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so now you call ETC, explain the situation and request immediate return to Chicago. Okay, Remember Chicago the, the control. Cruiser 219. 219. Chicago control, cross. Cruiser. Cruiser 219. Uh, we have a sick passenger on board, request immediate return and descent for the nearest airport available. Okay, so listen to ATC, check if he understood you. Uh, we are clear for immediate return. return. Uh, a passenger had a heart attack, not a pilot. Okay, so now we're moving on to another situation. Okay. okay. Before I play the CD, I want you to describe this picture. Well, you can see uh, a lot of aircraft, uh, probably uh, waiting for takeoff. Uh, you can see one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. six, seven, eight, nine aircraft in the picture uh, during taxi procedures. Uh, we can see uh, a holding point uh, on the picture, apparently, but I would guess it's a, a takeoff waiting line. Okay. okay? So, you are the captain of one of these aircrafts, okay? I want you okay. to make a passenger announcement advising that there will be a delay for takeoff due to air traf okay. traffic. Okay. Ladies and okay. gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I'd like to inform you that uh, we're going to have a little delay uh, to take off due to some traffic. If you have any doubts, uh, please contact one of our flight attendants. Thank you. Okay, now I want you to talk to ATC and ask how long the delay will be and state that you are worried about your fuel amount. Okay. okay, the call sign is Cruiser 235. Cruiser, ground, this is Cruiser 235. Uh, requesting estimated time for takeoff, we have a problem with our fuel. Uh, that's it. Okay, and ask how long the delay will be. <laughs> How long will be uh, our delay for takeoff? Okay. Cruiser two, two three, three five. Okay. Okay. Listen to them. The delay is twenty five minutes. Uh, we are worried about our fuel. Okay. Good. So 
wrong, I will lead to the third part of the test, okay? okay? In this part, you will listen to two different conversations, two different situations, not okay. conversations, okay? okay? But this time, I can play the CD on the okay? okay? Then you tell me what you understood, and I'll ask you some questions related to the situation. Okay. Okay? Okay. The pilot uh, is having a navigation problem. He's lost and uh, he's low on fuel and requesting nearest airport available for landing. Okay. okay. What may cause a pilot to get lost? Electrical problem uh, on your flight instruments. Um, he's experienced, <laughs> you know. But I think the most common. Uh, Reason would be electrical problem, a uh, problem with your flight instruments, GPS, FMRs, uh, anything that could go wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. What are the problems with getting lost? Well, getting lost? Uh, <laughs> you're using fuel, so you have, uh, you have that limitation. Uh, you, if you're carrying passengers, you should be worried about them, you know. Uh, you have to contact the ATC, and uh, the ATC will not like uh, this condition. Uh, you have to request assistance, uh, at most cases, if there is any ATC available uh, in the region you're flying. Um, I think that's it. You know, it's, a, it's not a good situation for you to be in, you know? What navigation needs exist to prevent a pilot from getting lost? GPS, GPS FMS, uh, inertial system, uh, basic IFR instruments, uh, even visual contact with the ground if you're flying under VFR flight rules. So, I guess that's it. Okay. Uh, and your knowledge. Oh. I'll play the second one. Okay. okay. What did you understand? Uh, the aircraft had a compressor stall. They requested descent. They requested descent and divert to Campinas. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. What causes compressor stalls? Well, compressor stalls uh, are a situation involving uh, airflow in the compressor mm -hmm. uh, blades. You know, when you decrease the airflow. Uh, this, this stall condition appears. Uh, you have the blades that are similar to little to wings, you know? So they really stall like a real wing does. And that may cause loss of engine power, uh, vibration. And what you should do is close the thrust levers and advance them again to see if the problem solves itself. You know, because you don't have a, a yes, you don't have a, a specific action for this. You know, okay. it's something that is happening inside the engine, and you don't have access. Like uh, if you're having a fire condition and use the bottles, uh, so you don't have a, a specific action. You need to close the thrust levers and advance them again to see if the, you can solve the problem. Okay. Okay. Now consider remove problems from part 3. Do you remember the first one? I'm sorry. Do you remember these problems we had now? You just listen? Yes. The first one, do you remember? It was... Uh, a good memory. Uh, no problem. Do you remember the last one? With one diversion to Campinas. Yes, yes. because he had... Uh, a compressor stop. And the one before, do you remember? Um, 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 <laughs> the pilot got lost. Yes. yes. How would you compare both situations? Um, I think 
predmyslík. I think it depends, you know. Uh, getting lost, I think it would be worse than a compressor stop. Because if you if you get lost under IFR flight rules, then you don't have the necessary uh, equipment on board to help you and assist you. I think you're in a pretty bad situation, you know. When you have a compressor stop uh, on one of the engines, uh, you can always try the action I told you before. So it's a bad situation as well. But uh, if that doesn't work you can cut off the engine and as far as I know uh, any commercial airliner uh, is able to fly with one engine or three if it's a four engine plane you know even two so I think getting lost uh, is worse right okay. in your opinion what's the worst emergency a pilot can have? loss of control why? because you don't have control of the aircraft. You can't even try to solve the situation. Uh, if you have a, a jammed control column uh, due to icing conditions or like go aircraft to have, you lost totally control of the aircraft. Yes. You know, entered a spin and went to the ground in a pretty bad dive situation. So yeah. I think that's the worst failure uh, or situation I could have while flying, in my opinion, you know, right. lost of control. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now we're moving to the fourth part of the test. The okay. Last one, okay. I want you to compare these pictures to me, and then I'll ask you some questions about them. Okay. Uh, the first picture shows Santos Dumont, right. uh, an airport located. Uh, near downtown Rio de Janeiro. Uh, uh, Santos Dumont doesn't provide you uh, with a very long runway. Mm -hmm. It's about 1,200 meters, if I recall. Uh, here you have Congoins, uh, surrounded by buildings and skyscrapers. Uh, you can see two runways, it's a pretty busy airport and crowded one, uh, as you should know. I think that's it. <laughs> Why are people so concerned about the runway length at Congonhas Airport when Santos Dumont is so much shorter? Well, Santos Dumont uh, is an airport that uh, has a better grooving on the runway. You know. And I, I already saw that it really is better. Uh, it's really better. Uh, Congoians, you have a, a condition, a runway slope, you know, that really, uh, how can I say, uh, affects safety depending on the condition, weather condition, or condition of the aircraft, eight weight conditions. Uh, Congoians is surrounded by buildings and houses and neighborhoods so it's pretty unsafe if you have an airline crash around the airport. Santos Dumont is surrounded by Guanabara Bay, you know, and although it's a pretty short runway, uh, if you ever, I don't know, if it happens like a uh, runway overshooting, you'll hit the water or the rocks here, you know, mm -hmm. like it happened uh, with a very aircraft, uh, I don't know, a few years ago, five, six, seven years later, <laughs> I don't remember. So, I think this is much worse than some sort of one. Okay. Okay. But what are the advantages and disadvantages of airports and city centers? Well, the advantages are you're in the center, you know, mm -hmm. you have quick access and transportation. Uh, if you have an airport like uh, Confins, do you know, in Belo Horizonte, it's pretty away from the city, so... Uh, like the name says? <laughs> yeah. Confins. Yeah, 
uh, it's pretty far from the city and and you have to uh, I don't know what's the distance that is well, it's pretty far from the city, you mm -hmm. know? So, I think having an airport uh, downtown uh, provides you with better transportation, uh, quick access, and that's it. Okay. Do you think the changes made in Congonhas Airport were enough to solve the problems? No. Why no. not? Congonhas is pretty crowded, you know, and it's increasing day by day. Uh, you don't see any clear spaces around the airport mm -hmm. and that's not going to change. You know that uh, because you're in Brazil. <laughs> so nothing is done here to solve the problem. And I think it's getting worse, you know, every day. And I don't see a future for this airport. You know? I don't see a future. I see uh, 20 years from now, uh, much more crowded than already is, so okay. not good. <laughs> Alright, Alexandre, this is the end of our test, okay? okay? Thank you for coming.